Hello, welcome back to Algebra 1. Here we're going to talk about some very, very important topics that we're going to use to build uh, on everything that we talk about from here on out. And the first of these topics is called negative numbers, the concept of a negative number, which we've kind of talked about a little bit. Uh, we're also going to talk about absolute value, and along the way, we're going to talk about something very important we'll use a lot called the number line. So let's start with that, the number line. Now, I know that you all have probably been exposed to what the number line is. We're going to talk about it my way here, and then we'll, we'll go from there. So we have this thing called the number line. So we'll draw an arrow pointed this way, and we'll draw a line all the way across pointed the other way. Now, in the middle of this number line is familiar zero. That's the concept of zero. Now, over to the right, everything over here are all of the numbers that you've been growing up dealing with, like three peanuts, two apples, five pencils, things like that. And so uh, you have the number one, the number two, the number three, the number four, the number five, and I could keep going, but basically you have uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and the arrow right here means that these numbers go on and on to infinity, okay? So these are the positive numbers, right? And we've talked about this, you've learned about this since you were a kid, you know, you know, you know what all of this stuff basically means. Um, these are the things that you can have. If you have three jelly beans or if you have two and a half cups of water, because don't forget the numbers in between here are on the number line too. So 3.5, 4.6, things like that. These are all of the numbers that you've been dealing with so, so far in life. So let me give you a couple, couple of examples. All of these numbers here, these are things like when you have money. In other words, I may have $3, so on the number line, that's going to be right here, $3. I may have $4.25, which is 4.25. That's going to be over here, because in the middle would be 4.5, so 4.25 would be somewhere over here. These are numbers in my bank account. These are, this is money I have, tangible objects I have. Or you might say, if you're talking, just to pick a different example than money, this could be altitude above sea level. So altitude above sea level these positive numbers here. Notice these are all positive because we don't put plus signs in front of them, but because there's, there's no negative signs, we, all, we assume and we know that they're positive. So I could be three feet above sea level or five feet above sea level. Those are positive numbers. Of course, this goes to infinity, so it could be 30,000 feet above sea level and so on. So now we'll cut uh, the suspense and talk about the numbers on the other side of zero. These numbers exist just like all of these numbers. It's just not something you really learn too much when you're playing in, in, in second grade. Right? So to the left of zero, you have negative one, and then you have negative two, and then you have negative three, and then ne negative four, and so on, negative five. Now when you continue going on this direction, you go on and on to negative infinity. Okay? So here you have, you see the nice symmetry here. It's like there's a mirror here. These numbers get bigger, bigger, bigger. So we can say that when you go this direction, um, these are larger positive numbers. The, the farther you go off to the right on the number line, the bigger, the larger the numbers get in the positive direction. And then when you go this direction, from zero pointed to the left, these are what you call larger negative. I'll put it in quotations, larger negative numbers. But the question remains, what is a negative number? Why would we spend time in math trying to define what a negative number actually is? Well, that's why I spent some time over here writing these things down, because these are things you understand. If you have $2 in the bank, that's positive 2. If you have $5 in the bank, that's positive 5. If you're 16 feet above sea level or above the ground, it's positive 16. So these numbers are going to be similar here. So what we're going to do is we're going to say these represent, for instance, if you're talking about money, when I owe you money. Okay? And I'll talk about that in a second. Or it could be altitude below sea level. It's just a way to keep track of what side of zero you're on. Everybody understands if they have $5 in the bank that they're over here in the number line. But what if I have no money in the bank? What if I have zero, right? And then I decide that I really need some money to, you know, um, you know, get the candy bar, right? So I'm in the lunch line with somebody and he puts $2 on the counter 
uh, and pays for me to get that candy bar. I eat that candy bar. I'm so thankful because I'm not hungry anymore, right? Um, but I don't. That was not money I had. I didn't have the two dollars. But after this person pays for me, then I don't have those two dollars. I never had the two dollars. So that was not positive numbers there. But I owe this guy two dollars. So suddenly I don't have zero money anymore. I actually borrowed money. So now I'm over here. I owe $2. If I actually get $2 from my job, the first thing I'm going to do is pay this guy back and that'll bring me back to zero because I'm going to take the $2. I'm going to give it away. So, so then I won't owe anybody anything and I won't have anything if I get $2 from my job and I give it away after I've been, uh, after I owed it to somebody. So the easiest way to think of negative numbers is when you owe people money. It's not money I have. It's money I don't have that I owe to someone else. I keep track of it, how many dollars I owe with the number, and the negative sign is keeping track that it's not real money I have. It's money that I owe to someone else. Now, the same analogy here below sea level. You know, you have, I can draw a little picture over here. If this is the ground, then this is the altitude above sea level, right? And then this would be the altitude below sea level. So when you're flying in an airplane, you're way up here in the sky. You're so many feet above sea level. But there are some places, believe it or not, that actually are, are um, near the coast. And maybe they're just a little bit, maybe they're in a valley, but they're near the water. So the, maybe the, the, the city is actually, or the, the road or the, the piece of land you're on is actually a little bit below sea level. Maybe it's a two or three feet below sea level. So you would keep tra track of that with a negative sign because it's negative relative to the, to the zero point, relative to where the sea is. That's why we call it sea level. So however you want to think about it, money or sea level, that's what negative numbers represent. They, they're just showing you the numbers that are on the other side of zero. They get larger the farther away you get from zero in the negative sense, just like the mirror image of what these guys are right here. So if we wanted to, to draw a few things on here, on the number line, right? For instance, we would say, if I owed somebody $3 because they bought me a bag of chips, then on the number line, that would be right here, right? So I could say, oh, $3. So I would represent that maybe as negative three. Okay, on the number line, see here is the number one and here is the number two. How would I represent negative 1.5? Well, this is between negative one, this is negative two. So negative 1.5 would be right in the middle here. And these are just examples. This was negative 1.5, okay? And then of course, the number two, that's really easy, that's just the number two. Uh, two uh, bucks in the bank, or in my pocket. All right, so I'm just plotting a few things to show you that the positive numbers are plotted uh, this way, the negative numbers are plotted this way, and when you're plotting decimals like that, you gotta be between one and two. Here's negative one, here's negative two, so negative one and a half is actually over here. Now we're gonna take a few seconds, we're gonna leave this here to kind of sink in, and we're gonna talk about the concept of absolute value because it goes hand in hand with what we've just talked about here, absolute value. All right, the easiest way, I could write a definition down, but the easiest way to, to talk about uh, absolute value is just to write down, it's the distance to zero. And you'll understand that when I give you a couple of examples. If I take the absolute value, which is written with these vertical bars of the number three, what is the absolute value? What it's asking you is, look at the number positive three and tell me how far away that number is from zero. So here's positive three. How many units is it away from zero? Well, it's three units away. One, two, three. That's very simple. So I gave you a simple example first. The absolute value of three is three because it's in the positive direction over here, but it's three units away from zero, the distance to zero. That's what the absolute value is. In a similar way, the absolute value of nine is just simply nine because it's off the chart here, but eventually I'll get to the number nine. That's where the number nine is. The distance to zero is nine units away, so we say that it's equal uh, to this. All right, now let's take the absolute value of negative three. What is that? It's the distance between negative three and zero. So here's negative three. What's the distance, distance between this and zero? How many units? One, two, three units away. So the absolute value, the distance between this number negative three and zero is simply three units away. How far away is negative seven from zero? It's just gonna be seven units away. How far is the number eight from zero? It's just going to be eight, okay? 
Uh, and we can do the same thing with fractions. How far away is the fraction 2 thirds from 0? It's just 2 thirds. That's 2 thirds of a unit away. What about the fraction negative 9 tenths? It's a negative fraction. How far away is that from 0? It's just 9 tenths. So the, the short answer is when you see something inside of the absolute value bars like this, all you do is you take the sign away. You throw the sign away, throw the sign away, throw the sign away, throw the sign away. These are already positive, but you throw it away, whatever, and you're just left with these positive numbers here. All you do is you take the number out, strip away the sign, and that is the absolute value because that is always going to be the distance to zero. No matter where it is in negative land over here, if you throw away the sign, that's going to be its absolute value. And we will use that as we work problems moving forward. So keep that in mind with what absolute value is, understand what negative numbers are, and then follow me on to the next lesson where we're finally going to start learning how to add and subtract these negative numbers together.